Today we're going to learn about the art principle of rhythm. We're going to use Hokusai's Amida Waterfall and the Kiso Road as the artwork that we're going to learn through. Rhythm in visual art refers to how the viewer's eyes travel through an art space. To move your eyes through the artwork, Hokusai uses three different types of lines. This kind of rhythm is called alternating. Circular curvy, up by the top of the waterfall. Here the lines become vertical and straight and lead us to the bottom of the picture area. And then they become stacked and curved, taking us back up to the original circle where the whole cycle begins again. All right, let's begin our own alternating rhythm drawing. So let's get our materials, a paper, pencil, tracing tool, and things to color with. Near the top of your paper, maybe a couple fingers from the top, go ahead and draw a medium-sized circle. Then we're going to start to draw our vertical lines coming down towards the bottom of our paper. Part of it should uh, overlap and be in the circle, not just starting at the circle, but in the circle. And for the falling water, we're going to do long, thin, spiky kind of hills. Don't worry about making them just like mine. Every day and every second of a day, the waterfall is going to fall differently. So your spikes, your hills, your uh, places where the water isn't can be where you draw them. That's perfectly fine. But do add some short side ones that don't go all the way down to the paper. You want to do that on both sides. Remember that water falls wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And go ahead and erase that line out of your circle now. Let's go ahead and put our little S curvy lines inside our circle, inside our moon. Maybe it's the moon, maybe it's the sun, maybe it's a hole in the rocks. I'm not really sure, but go ahead and do that. Make some of the lines a little closer together and then space some of the other ones out just a hair. That's nice. It's looking very good so far. We're going to start working on our stacked curves for all the cliffs that are along the side. And really these are just little hills that don't really go anywhere and they just kind of sit on top of each other. Go ahead and put some in front of your waterfall because your waterfall goes behind it. Make sure they're not all exactly the same. Make some tall, some short, some wide, some narrow. Go ahead and start working on the other side. And again, they don't have to match. They don't have to be balanced. They'll be curved and they'll be on top of each other. And that will be the repeating element that gives this picture the rhythm and helps us kind of ha have a place to look. Kind of like our tour guide taking us through the picture. Our 
I hope you're liking what you're drawing so far. I hope you find this relaxing and fun. Go ahead and add some lines for trees. Dashed lines on an angle are really good for making evergreens. Go ahead and put in a tree. Wiggle your lines, separate them. So that you have some branches off of your trunk. Remember to always double your lines. Give your lines a friend. Because trees aren't thin little sticks. They're kind of thick. They hold together. They're strong. Go ahead and put some thin clouds at the tip of your branches. Don't worry about making your details too perfect or too detailed. That's really not what this picture is about. You can add little dashes for grass. We're going to add some bushes and some grass and some other plant life to our picture. All the little extra details we put in are fun little things for people to look at. They give us texture. They give us value. They give us depth. They give us believability. They give us a story. So use little dashed lines for your grass. Make little hilled lines, cloud lines for bushes little ovals for just a simple little plant and put them in places where you think they might grow, where there maybe is a crevice or a crack. I think that tree needs a couple more branches. I'm going to put some little grass over here and the edges where it's kind of falling over the cliff, like the erosion has happened. And the grass is kind of loose and maybe some little plants growing next to that. So it's very alive. This isn't just rock. It's a place where things grow. So go ahead and put in your dashed lines and your curved lines and your cloud lines and build yourself a scene. When you're all done, go ahead and take your tracing tools and redraw your lines with them.